1945, just before the atomic bombs were dropped, I was on the island of Tinian in the Pacific. It was the biggest air base in the world. And it was a place of extraordinary frustration because there was nothing to do. Nobody read, there were very few books. One day I received from a friend of mine who was in the military in Paris, an article by somebody I'd never heard of, Jean-Paul Sartre. I read the piece and I thought, this is noble, this is revolutionary, it's great. I copied it into my journals. I never read in films, but I'm going to read that piece because it meant so much to me. Every epoch discovers an aspect of the condition of humanity. In every epoch, man chooses for himself with regard to others, to love, to death, to the world. And when a controversy arises on the subject of the disarmament of the radical resistance or of the aid to be given to the Spanish Republicans, it is that metaphysical choice, that personal and absolute decision, which is in question. Thus, by becoming a part of the uniqueness of our time, we finally merge with the eternal. And it is our task as writers to cast light upon eternal values which are involved in these social and political disputes. Yet we are not concerned with seeking these values in an intelligible paradise, for they are only interesting in their immediate form. Far from being relativists, we assert emphatically that man is absolute, but he is absolute in his own time in his own environment, on his own earth. The absolute which a thousand years of history cannot destroy is this irreplaceable, incomparable decision which he makes at this moment in these circumstances. The absolute is Descartes, the man who escapes us because he is dead, who lived in his time, who thought in his time from day to day with limited data, who formed doctrine in accordance with a certain stage reached in science, who knew Gassendi, Cateris, and Mersenne, who in his childhood loved a shady young woman who was a soldier and got a servant girl with child, who attacked not the principle of authority in general, but the authority of Aristotle in particular, and who arises out of his time like a landmark, disarmed but unconquered. And the relative is Cartesianism, that Coster borrows philosophy, which is trotted out century after century, in which everyone finds whatever he has put in. It is not by chasing after immortality that we will make ourselves eternal. We will not make ourselves absolute by reflecting in our works desiccated principles, which are sufficiently empty and negative to pass from one century to another. But by fighting passionately in our own time, by loving it passionately, and by consenting to perish entirely with it.